right, guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go to this great email I sent from a subscriber. It's from a guy I'm guessing he's definitely in his 60s or so. And he shares his experience of the last 40 years he's had with women to really help out guys that want to do relationships. Now, before a lot of you guys feel like you want to barf at such a prospect, hear me out. This guy is definitely a former Chad or a guy that definitely did his Chad phase until he met his wife who was a lot younger than him and has had a very good, healthy marriage. And he writes in all these things, not just about red flags, women, but green flags, things to look for that will improve the odds substantially that you could have a very good, long-lasting, healthy relationship. Again, for you relationship guys that one day want to get married, believe me, he mentions prenups and all these other things, things to look out for. Because at the end of the day, let's be honest here, a lot of guys that watch me are relationship guys, either because they simply want to and have a family one day, kids and all that, or because it's a part of their culture, their religion. So it's in their interest to know things that to help them along the way. You know, you all know about red flags, but then there's also green flags as well. And this guy makes it abundantly clear in detail about these things. And I, I'll add on my extra two cents here and there to, 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 to help out with this, this email here. But this guy really is the nail on the head. So for your relationship guys, but want to go with the knowledge that is on this channel, this will definitely help you out. It's worth 20 minutes of your time. He says, uh, Dear SSM, I've been following your content since 2021, and I've only missed a handful of your podcasts since then. I've learned a lot from your podcast and would like to add my relationship knowledge and experience to hopefully benefit your listeners as I benefited from their stories. Well, brother, I appreciate your support since 2021, the early days. And by the way, guys, he mentioned podcasts. I don't have separate podcasts. He's referring to, you know, here on YouTube. Clearly, he just listens instead of watches, watches me in the car. Since uh, most of your content focuses on identifying red flags and working your way out of a bad situation, I would like to address the question of green flags and how to pick up a good woman for your relationship types of guys out there. I think that men desire marriage more than women because we have a stronger drive to reproduce, leave behind a legacy, and send our DNA into perpetuity. Uh, yeah, it's a good idea to look for some green flags because i got a lot of relationship guys that watch me here, whether you want to admit it or not. And this guy obviously is a lot older, so he has a lot of life experience. But be below are some lessons I've learned from over 40 years of being on this earth, growing up with multiple sisters, betting over 50 women, and investing in the wrong ones before getting married and starting a family with a much younger woman who is on the better end of the female character spectrum. Uh, my first and most important piece of advice for vetting a woman for long-term commitment is to vet yourself. If you are afraid of women, i.e. afraid of her being angry, frustrated, or crying, then you are not ready for long-term commitment. Right. Because you're going to fall for her crying and being frustrated and her being angry. A lot of guys don't stand up for themselves because they're afraid that, oh no, she's going to get mad at me. Who gives a shit? Guess, guess what? A lot of gals get mad at the bad boys and cry over the bad boys. Who do they still chase after? The bad boys. Uh, wanting to protect, provide for, and fix uh, problems is a natural instinct for men, but you must learn to override this instinct to avoid being taken advantage of. Correct. It is easy to stand your ground with your sister who you grew up with, but when confronted with a romantic interest, everything changes and your toughness goes right out the window. Like Mike Tyson said, everyone has a plan until you get punched in the face. Yep. That saying was said more times in my martial arts school than I ever... <laughs> And you know what? Any guys that do martial arts or boxing, when you reach the point that you can begin sparring, you get the headgear on, the mouth guard gear in, and you do rounds with your fellow students, that's where everybody has a plan how they're going to fight until they get clocked in the head. Uh, similarly, everyone is in control until you are attracted to someone. Being afraid of an upset woman is one of man's most vulnerable traits. This fear <clears throat> this fear will cause you to simp, prevent you from protecting yourself against your worst nature, prevent you from enforcing boundaries, and will lead you to make bad decisions like getting legally married without a properly executed prenup agreement in place. This is why I'm doing this story, guys, because this guy, through his life experiences, knows what the hell he's talking about here. This brings me to point number two. If you are unable to accept that all women have some have the same instincts and many of them share the same behavioral patterns, then you are not ready for a long-term commitment. Your sister, your mother, that girl you had a crush on who broke your heart, your ex-girlfriend or ex-wife, your grandmother, and your co-worker, Angela. 
In other words, guess what? Women are women. All over the world, doesn't make a difference. The culture, the religion, whatever. And if it's your mom, your grandma, your sister, they were all once young women and did what young women did and still do what they do. All of them run in the same operating system. If you think that this one is different, then you will learn a very hard lesson. Very few women choose to behave in a manner that supersedes their feminine instincts. For a long-term commitment, you are looking for a woman who leans towards her better nature more often than not or who has a higher enough desire for you that she will choose to act in the best interest of your relationship, more often than not, over a sustained period of time. My last piece of advice for vetting yourself is to get your shit together. Eat healthy and exercise. Pursue your hobbies and passion projects. Work hard to earn and save money and live a fulfilled life. Well, I'm going to add to the part when he says, work hard to earn and save money. It ain't just saving, it's investing money You know, you can put in the fucking checking account and make nothing as opposed to investing in assets that you're comfortable with that can appreciate and value over time. And I'm sure that's what he meant, but I just have to state that. And of course, this is pure entertainment. I'm not a financial advisor. And if you want financial advice, go to a fucking professional down the street. You all get the point. Do not wait until you have all your ducks in a row to pursue women. Get out there and start experiencing with women and listen to plenty of SSM across all his channels to learn about women's behavior and avoid the worst pitfalls. Now, I say, guys, always put yourself first, and I will mean that to my dying breath, and focus on your grind, your purpose. However, you can still date guys if you're in your you know late teens and 20s, but your purpose still comes first. So it's ideal to get some experience, but your purpose comes first. The school, the certifications, the gym... Um, your job, whatever the hell it is, making money, but you can date and everything because if, if you're a relationship guy, of course. If you, if, you, if you have no interest in relationships, then who gives a shit? You know, but and now you get some experience. And I might add, if during your grind, you meet a gal when you have nothing and she's still into you, that can say something. But of course, you must be careful. Now on to vetting the women for long-term commitment. Okay, here we go. First, understand that women have different motivations, attraction triggers, and different ideas of what a successful relationship or marriage looks like. Most men consider successful to be a loyal and fulfilling one's duty until death do his part. This is not the definition of successful that most women will pursue. So understand you are looking for a rare gem who will align with your masculine ideas and values and who will adhere to them more often than not over the long term. Translation, you're looking for a feminine, traditional gal, not some butch feminist. Or, guess what? Nowadays, you can get some very physically beautiful women, facial features, body types, but then, but you can look at their body language that they're masculine. They open their mouths and start yapping, and it's like, oh, Jesus, okay, Conan, you know? So that's another thing. The first trait to look for in a wife is youth and beauty. Attraction is not a choice. You do not need to feel guilty or defend what you are attracted to. The reality of our evolution in biology is that men are attracted to younger, fertile women. Do not offer long-term or serious commitment to any woman over 27 years old. Green flag zone is 20 to 23, maybe 24 to date, get to know, vet, and eventually offer a long-term monogamy too. You probably heard women say, if you're not with me at my worst, then you don't deserve me at my best. Fuck that. (laughs) I agree. Do not enter this messy female frame. Live by this instead. If she doesn't get with you at her best, then she doesn't deserve you at her worst. Do not be fooled by women who rejected you when you were when they were young and hot, and do not be their backup option. Move on, get with a younger, hotter, tight, tight hunger. Move on, get on with a younger, hotter, and tighter. Yes. How many times have I told you guys out there that through the stories, lots of guys will in high school and college and in their 20s, the gals they really want are rejecting them. They're off with the bad boys, Chad and Tyrone. And then magically somehow when they get close to 30, these same type of gals that didn't want them are now interested. They're doing it because as they're getting 30, the guys they really want aren't interested anymore or they realize those guys can't give them a ring, a wedding, and they'll come after you. Don't waste your time. When you guys have busted your tails to make something yourself, and now you are, say, in your 30s or something like that, doing well, and let's just say you didn't date before, okay, it's your choice to, like, get experience, and now you have gals in their late 20s, 30s after you, say 30s, but you know darn well you can get girls in their mid-20s 
younger, hotter, tighter, more beautiful, more feminine, and that are chasing after you, really, who are you going to pick? The gals that wouldn't give me the time of day? Or, you see what I mean? But of course, you're careful. Another green flag is a woman who generally respects men. When I was dating my wife, one of her most positive traits that I noticed was how she spoke about her father. It was clear that she admired him, respected him, and was grateful for all the hard work and sacrifices for her and the family. It was also clear that she did not consider her parents to be her friends. When talking about her family, she said things like, My mom and dad were both strict. I would never think about saying that to my parents. My mom always said the same thing as my dad. They were always on the same page. No, no way my dad would ever let me do X, Y, or Z. My parents would say they don't care what other kids and other families do. This sounds like my parents, which is why my sister, thank the Lord, is a <laughs> traditional gal. These kinds of phrases gave me insight that her dad was a strong figure in her life and that perhaps more importantly, she saw her mother following her dad's lead. Precisely. When I finally met my now wife's family, uh and was added to the family group chat, two things were clear. Number one, her older brother was also an authority figure in her life who she deferred to and her parents did not spoil her or tell her brother to go easy on her. And number two, her mother is very much into her dad. You can tell from the way she treats him and how she's all over him pictures they send to the group chat. That's awesome. You know, the joke is like married couples, they never sleep together or anything like that and no traction, they're roommates. And that is extremely common but every so often guys you'll see a married couple that have been together a long time and you can still tell that there's attraction between the mother and the father they can be in their 50s and you almost always the guy is masculine the guy is a leader the wife is feminine she may be 50 years old but she takes care of herself and looks good for 50 years old she goes to the salon takes care of her hair nails exercises sure she doesn't look as good as she did when she was 22 but she looks damn good for 50 right and she'll want to hold his hand and sit close to him and kiss him and hug him and all that that touchy feel of shit like she was 21 years old again because she's attracted to him and she has that respect for him women do not do that to guys they don't respect or are not attracted to you see what i mean and right here that's what it sounds like to me my mom even when she was in her 50s, was holding my dad's hand and they'd hug and they'd kiss and all these types of things, you know, and, and my dad was a lot older. It was a great family I grew up in. Uh, pay attention to her family dynamic because she will mirror it. In other words, like I say, guys, always pay attention to the family. If there's a lot of turmoil and drama, that's going to be your girlfriend in your life. But if there's a lot of love in the family and respect and all that, that could be your family. Another important flag to pay attention to is, is how to deal with conflict. Do not expect a relationship to be ab absent of conflict. That is not realistic. Nope. There's always going to be conflict. Do not expect a woman to think and behave like you do. This is impossible. Instead, pay attention to how she deals with conflict. During dating or casual sex, she will inevitably push for more commitment. The more commitment she pushes for, the more boundaries you will enforce and maintain to keep the relationship healthy. Look, guys, if a girl is pushing for a relationship and all that, guess who has the power? You. Ding, 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 you do, because she's chasing after you. If the guy's pushing for the relationship, he's acting like a woman, and she has the fucking power. And by you having the power and having the leverage, because she's chasing after your commitment, you can set boundaries. There you go. You will not meet with a woman who has male friends, goes out at night without you, talks to your exes, or seeks online attention. Exactly. She will not understand that these boundaries maintain healthy monogamy, and she will initially view these boundaries as control. Let her view them as control and controlling. Tough shit. If she doesn't like it, hit the road. You can replace her ass. Right there. I say all the time, no male friends that she's hanging out with. No more behaving like a single girl with the girls' nights and girls' weekends and that shit. Talking to exes and posting her ass on Instagram. No. Likewise, when the topic of marriage comes up and you explain that you will not get married without a properly executed prenup agreement, she will not be happy. There ain't no way she's going to be happy unless she herself comes from money or she herself has worked hard and has a nest egg and all that do not expect her to go along with your boundaries right away that will be awkward even suspicious expect her to get upset angry sad cry try to use shame and guilt and the entirety of the woman's emotional toolbox to get her way and he's talking about even the good ones good ones are going to pull this shit 
However, stick to your guns. Yes, always stick to your guns, gentlemen. A good woman will disagree with you, feel bad at first, but will come around after two or three days. Yes. If she deals with conflict in unhealthy ways, like going out partying, calling her exes, or de demonizing you to all her friends, then remove your commitment and move on. Exactly. Guys, all relationships are going to have disagreements. It happens. In fact, a healthy relationship will have disagreements and an occasional fight. And when I say fight, I don't mean throwing the fucking china at each other. Or you get the point. But at those relationships, we never fight. Or, uh, those aren't good. You're, good. you're two human beings, different people, and you're going to have disagreements. But it's how you handle it is sets how everything's going to go. You want to commit to someone who engages in conflict and resolves differences in a healthy manner. Who chooses to enter your chooses to enter your frame after the initial emotional shock of being presented with your boundaries? Communication is key, guys. And it, and if she doesn't handle a disagreement in a healthy way, tell her to hit the road. Problem is, a lot of guys get so booty whipped they can't do that. Another note on boundaries: the more she already lives within your boundaries, the more aligned your values are. For example, an important boundary is that she does not hang around with male friends. Or her exes while in a relationship with you. If she bans her male friends and potential suitors and avoids talking to exes while dating you, then there's a good chance she always believes in it is inappropriate to entertain other men while in a relationship. Amen. Couldn't agree more. This is a good sign that your values align. However, if she fails in line, if she falls in line without a conversation, it is important to communicate and more importantly, demonstrate your boundaries and expectations clearly. I also want to add, guys, if you're setting boundaries. You got to also stick to them too. If you're telling her, okay, we're going to be in a relationship, but there's going to be no hanging out with other dudes. There's going to be no posting yourself online. There's going to be no these girls trips and behaving like a single woman type of thing. Then guys, guess what? You're not hanging out with other women and you're not, it's different on, it's different social media with guys, but you're not hanging out with other women, talking to other women, talking to exes, behaving in ways that you get the point. You got to match your mirror what you're saying here. Otherwise you're a fucking hypocrite. Don't assume and don't leave anything to chance to open to interpretation. Most of these women have been fed with modern relationship and feminist bullshit that is harmful to long-lasting relationships for their entire lives. There are the green flags to vet for, but in the interest of time, I will stick to these three as they are extremely important. It is arguably more important to recognize and avoid the red flags, and watching SSM will help you do just that. Thank you, sir. Either way, thank you SSM for the work you do to educate men and help us avoid and address the worst parts of female nature. I'm sure that sharing our stories and exchanging info puts you in a difficult position with online haters, and we appreciate the many challenges that you deal with in order to help us learn and achieve better lives. Yep, I get my share of hate every freaking day, and I reach to the point that I just laugh it all up. The worst hate I got, honestly, guys, was in the beginning because I was new. And then after, as time went on, it would just decrease more and more. But whenever my channel or channels or I get a bump up in promotion on YouTube, a lot of newcomers come to the channels. And I can I always know when the channels are being promoted, extra, extra promotion going on, if you will, is when I get a lot of new people that start hating on me and everything because they're new, you know. And I just, if they're, there's, there's constructive criticism, I'm okay with that. Or even criticism, but when somebody comes on as rude or insulting or, or, or being trolls, stuff like that, I just ban them from the channel so they can never come back. I have time for that shit. But believe me, I've grown thick skin. I've been insulted in every possible way, and I could care less. At the end of the day, these assholes come there and they watch the videos, and I and I make money off them. So fuck them. The last I get the last laugh. I laugh all the way to the bank on my haters. So, but I'm doing okay. Don't worry about me and I'll continue doing this. So, sir, thank you for writing this in. This is very good. You clearly know what the hell you're talking about here. And it's, it's good to hear other guys know this. And this video will definitely help some guys out there. To the guys that have no interest in relationships, this is not going to do anything for them. But a lot of guys do want relationships with this knowledge here because they do want sons and, well, children, if you will. And uh, it's important to them. So, this definitely will help them out. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.